Oh, I'm gonna get judged after this video. I can feel it. Hi, I'm Andre, and in an earlier video, I confessed my unapologetic, unironic love for the Super Mario Brothers movie. I know it is a bad movie, but I can't help it, man. I just love that movie. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. But in that video, I said that if that video got over 3,000 likes, I would do another video. Uh, you did not give me 3,000 likes on that video. Last time I checked, you gave me over 6,000 likes. Oh my gosh, you guys want me to keep talking about movies I like that you know you don't, so you can judge me. I'm fine with that. You know what? Because you doubled the amount that I asked for, I'm not gonna give you one movie. I'm gonna give you five. Five movies that are bad, that everyone says are not good movies, that I'm just like, eh, I'm cool with it, or I, I kinda like it, I'm sorry. Before I get into my top five, I wanna put an honorable mention out there because I don't know if this movie is considered a bad movie across the Webernets and the geekdom, but I did see it on a few worst movies of the 90s list. It does have a very low review score. So I'm gonna just mention it. The Flintstones movie? Like, is that a bad movie? I like that movie. I thought it was a pretty accurate representation of the Flintstones cartoon show. Some people complain that the plot of that movie is a little simple, but I'm like, the Flintstones was a little simple. It was a sitcom, basically an animated honeymooners. So of course the movie would have a sitcom style plot. And it's pretty much in line with Fred Flintstone. You know, he wants to get high up in the Slate Company. Somebody tricks him. He's not smart enough to realize it, but he always thinks he know what's going on but he doesn't, that's classic Fred Flintstone right there. Plus I thought the design of the Flintstones movie was amazing. They found a really nice balance between making it live action, but yet it still feels like a cartoon. Like it never gets into full on Jurassic Park territory, but it's not as like low key as, I don't know, the Land of the Lost TV show or movie, take your pick. Land of Lost, the movie is not on my list. John Goodman is great as Fred, Rick Moranis as Barney Rubble, and then Halle Berry in that movie. I mean, damn. I mean, Halle Berry looks good in a lot of movies, but the Flintstones, Halle Berry. That is a special perfection of Halle Berry. God dang. But I don't know what the discourse is on the Flintstones. I don't know if the Flintstones even has discourse. So that's why I didn't put it on my top five. Now let's get into the actual top five. Here we go, number five. Look, I hear all the complaints about Batman and Robin, but I also hear some of these complaints about Batman Forever and I gotta be honest, man, I, I don't hate Batman Forever. I actually enjoyed that movie. I saw it in theaters, had a good time with it. I enjoyed Jim Carrey as the Riddler. Is he over the top? Yeah, but it's Jim Carrey in the 90s. What were you expecting? I will walk around with that question mark cane. We finally got Robin in this one and they gave the origin story of it. It's just really colorful and, and cheesy and fun. Yeah, it's silly, it's wacky, it's not the Tim Burton stuff, but I thought Schumacher brought his own style to it. A little bit different, but also still entertaining, even if it's not the same as the Burton films. Plus, Batman Forever gave us Kiss from a Rose and a Method Man doing an entire rap song about the Riddler. I had that Riddler single. The only thing that makes me bummed about that movie is that Billy Dee Williams was Harvey Dent in the first Batman movie, and now all of a sudden, he's Tommy Lee Jones. What the hell? Where Where is that anger? <laughs> Internet. If it was the other way around. <laughs> nah, let me stop, let me stop. It's not the same as the Burton movies. I, of course, love the Burton movies, but rest in peace, Joel Schumacher. Batman Forever, I enjoy it. It's good stuff for me. I said it. Let's move on. Number four. All right, it's confession time. I, um, I don't really hate the first Transformers. Like, I have problems with the franchise as a whole, but if you were to ask me which Michael Bay Transformers movie would I want to watch, I would pick the first one. I think the first one obviously has the flaws that the other ones have, but it's like light. Even though it still has the wacky Michael Bayisms, the first movie is pretty competent. You know, you got Shia LaBeouf, he wants a new car, car ends up being Bumblebee, then we find out about the Transformers, he has a crush on Megan Fox, she comes along on the adventure. You know, you got the government involved, you got the military involved, and Everything that got amped up to ridiculousness in the other movies aren't as bad in this one. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf is doing his no, 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 but it's not so much. Megan Fox is actually a competent, cool character in the movie. I really liked her in the first movie. The parents are actually kind of funny in the first one. They're not 
painfully insufferable. Then the second one happened. The Autobots are cool. I mean, they do throw some slang, but not as much as the second one. I mean, you got Eddie Winslow voicing the Autobot. Come on. I mean, it's the one they killed, but still. And that moment when Optimus Prime drives up and he slowly transforms and you see him and then make the uh, 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 and then he gives the Peter Cullen voice. I'm just like, oh, nostalgia. It cut me deep. I feel like it's the one that kind of knew what it was supposed to be. Like the first Transformers knows it's supposed to be a high octane popcorn flick action film, explosions, robot, CGI, wacky jokes. It is enjoyable. It's the other ones that I get mad at because they kind of take themselves a little bit too seriously and in doing so makes it more ridiculous. When you start going, let's connect the Transformers history to the Underground Railroad and the days of Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table, that, that, that's stupid. But the first one is just like, look man, we're gonna take your 80s toy, make it a big budget PG-13 action flick for your summer, knock it out the park, and they did. Um, I just don't know what happened after that. <laughs> All I know is I ate the whole plate. The whole plate. Number three. All right, here's what's gonna start getting crazy. I know it is literally considered one of the worst Spider-Man movies of all time, one of the worst superhero movies of all time. But I am sorry, I I enjoy Spider-Man 3. I know it's very easy now because we've got Tom Holland and we've gotten so many Spider-Man animated series since then to be like, I don't need Spider-Man 3. But I, I just, there's just a number of things in it that I actually kind of like. I like the whole idea of Peter Parker kind of getting a little too into himself as Spider-Man. That's what makes it interesting when the symbiote gets on him because even though he's definitely feeling himself a little bit too much, um, he's still a little filtered. The symbiote shows what happens when you have the powers of Spider-Man and you're not that filtered. And yes, that does include some really weird dancing in the street and whatever that nightclub performance was, I get it. But like, there's more to the movie than that. Sandman story in that movie is so good. He's a bad guy, he's a robber, he's a villain, but he's doing it, you know, for his kid. He just wants to help his kid out. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time with Uncle Ben. The Osborne amnesia thing, that was a little weird. I will give you that, but you know, it worked out. Bruce Campbell, that was good stuff. The action in the movie, still entertaining. But of course, the big issue that people have with it is Venom. You know, and I get it. Studio Metling, like many of these films, Studio Metling got involved and that's why we had to get Topher Grace as Eddie Brock as Venom in the movie when we were already pretty much done with the movie. Like, Venom shows up in this movie pretty much when the movie's about done. Like, we're already picking up our popcorn, <laughs> about to head out, and the movie's like, nah, let's add Venom as another villain in the third act of the damn film. So I get it. <laughs> but I feel like that I still see Sam Raimi's vision. I still see what Spider-Man 3 the movie could have been without that meddling. And I think for those parts that are still in the movie, they still work. Here's what I think they should have did. I think they should have filmed Spider-Man 3 and 4 at the same time. And imagine that scene when Peter's like hitting the bell and ripping the symbiote off and throws down and Eddie Brock's under there and it lands on top of him and he goes all on the ground like ah, ah, and it turns into that venom base and he lunges towards the camera. Imagine if the movie stopped there and was like to be continued, but you knew that Spider-Man 4 was gonna come out the following year because they already filmed it. That would have been amazing. No pun intended. The Spider-Man movies did so much for superhero movies at its time Spider-Man 3 was a big part of that, and it has a huge box office, so, you know, don't act like y'all ain't see it. You may not have seen it more than once, <laughs> but I've seen it more than once. Even with all these flaws, it's fine. I laughed when he did all this. I was laughing. Other people were laughing, too. I'm starting to realize that maybe they were laughing at the film where I was laughing with the film, but still, Jolly was created as a result of all this. <laughs> and they keep referencing it. Into the Spider-Verse reference that moment. Thank you, Spider-Man 3. Even your memes are helpful for the future of superhero movie franchises. <laughs> Number two. I don't know if Double Dragon gets a lot of hate by itself. I feel like it gets lumped in with just the general hate of video game movies, particularly video game movies of the 90s, like Super Mario Brothers, which I've obviously already talked about. I recently watched Double Dragon, it was on Amazon Prime, so I was like, let me go check it out. I haven't seen it since it first came out. Well, actually, I actually didn't even see it when it came out in theaters, I watched it on videotape. But yeah, I, I kinda had fun with it. Like, yeah, kinda like Super Mario Brothers, 
they definitely took some liberties, but it's just one of those movies that I call like a Saturday matinee type of film. It's that movie that you would play immediately after the cartoons are over and it's got enough action and silliness and colors. It's just enough to keep you entertained even if you know it ain't high quality at all. Also just some of the weird things that they do in the movie, like it's supposedly set in the future. What was it, like Vanna White is like a news reporter? Vanna White and George Hamilton, right? Andy Dick is doing the weather. It's just like weird stuff. Alyssa Milano is awesome in it. She's definitely a different version of Marion. Brothers, Billy and Jimmy Lee. I uh, I really enjoyed watching them in this movie. I thought that their their chemistry was fun and I thought the movie was just fun. And then there's a scene when like their, their friend like, I mean, spoiler alert, I was kind of like, kind of sad about it. I was like, oh. And don't get me started on how they make a Bobo in this film. Oh my gosh. It's a very 90s movie, but I think that's what I like about it. The thing about a lot of 90s movies is even when they're bad, there's just a certain amount of character to them. They're just made a certain way that's just like, this is just weird to watch, so I gotta watch it. And Double Dragon fits that. Plus, Double Dragon decided to actually have a Double Dragon arcade cabinet in their movie, Double Dragon. While it is no way faithful to the Double Dragon franchise at all, I enjoyed it. Plus, the villain is freaking Robert Patrick. You know, it's it, the T-1000. What the weirdest, craziest looking haircut died and just hamming it up so much. Yeah, dude, I like I like that Double Dragon movie. <laughs> Number one, movie that I have fun watching, even though I know everyone hates it. I'm sorry. I just love Ninja Turtles too much. I just, I know, <laughs> I know but I just love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles so much. And I love the first movie from 1990 and I love Secret of the Ooze. And I'm not saying I love this one on the same level. It is definitely much lower. I don't know what it is about Turtles 3, man. I just, I know, like every time I watch it, I'm like, I know those costumes are terrible. Could you not get the old costumes? Like why'd you make these? These jokes are horrible. This is a pale imitation of what the first movie gave us. When you look at that first film, the masterpiece of that first film, and you look at Turtles 3, you're like, what happened? But, I kind of like the story. I like the whole like time traveling to ancient Japan and the helping the village out. You know, that whole story of like, we gotta help out this village is gonna be taken over. These people are gonna be taken over. They're getting swindled by the, the, the white man coming in. And they're in the costumes and people think they're demons or monsters. And Corey Feldman returns, Donatello, Casey Jones comes back. They reference the Adams Family. You were expecting maybe the Adams Family? Schwing, you know, I, I know, I know, I know. I know, I'm sorry. And everything that's wrong about it makes me like it more. It's like Super Mario Brothers. The worse it is, the more I like it. Turtles 3, it counts. Full trilogy, you cannot erase it from existence. It exists, it is a thing. If you ever try to buy the movies in a pack, it comes with the pack. You don't just skip over to TMNT, no. I wanna watch it again now. Like talking about it, it's like I kinda wanna watch it again. It's like weird, like just staring at it, just like, this exists as a movie and I can't turn away from it. It's like Mac and Me, you know? It's just like, oh, I should have put Mac and Me on my list. I've actually watched Mac and Me, I think more than I've watched E.T. <laughs> and I've definitely watched Ninja Turtles 3 more times than a lot of actual good films. So there you have it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time. The story is actually kind of interesting just painted over some really bad animatronics and some really bad movie making. But I like that little mess of a film. Which one of these movies should I talk about more? Write it in the comments or I'll do the poll thing. Does this thing still do polls? I, you, I don't know what YouTube does anymore. I don't know what I do on YouTube anymore. And if I do the poll, I'm not gonna put Turtles 3 on there because I know. I know that's the one I should talk about in the future. Let me know which of these movies you actually secretly like yourself, and uh, if there's any other ones. Thank you so much for listening to this. If this is your first time here, please subscribe, like the video. Maybe I'll do this again with some other movies in the future if you wanna see that. 
I love you like a play cousin. I'm out of 5,000. And whatever movie you like, just like it because you like it. Don't worry about people. Do you. <laughs>